Now for Block E Media's next featured interview, this is with Jasmine Buller. Jasmine Buller is the owner and operator of the Laughing Buddha Yoga Studio, which is in Richmond, but it's not necessarily a studio, it's a mobile studio, which we will talk about in a few minutes from now. Jasmine's an amazing person and I was so happy that we had a chance to talk a bit uh, about these three main points. Uh, one, the first one is following your dreams and taking risks and to pursue uh, the dreams and goals that you've set out for yourself. Uh, really inspiring stuff. And the next one is just starting a business um, under the age of 30. So starting a business while you're under 30, um, oftentimes that's super hard uh, to be able to do, um, especially because there's oftentimes a lot of distractions, aka uh, the people you surround yourself with. So we talk a bit about that. And the last thing that we did uh, go over was um, differentiating yourself from the competition with your offer. So if you have a better offer than the competition, then your business will most likely succeed. So we talk a bit about those three things. And once again, this is Jasmine Buller, and you're watching Block E Media. You're listening to the Block E Podcast. Hi, my name's Jasmine. I am a 25-year-old yoga instructor. I've been teaching yoga, meditation, mindfulness more recently um, for the last 12 years. I got my first certification when I was 14 as a yoga instructor. I recently started my own business, The Laughing Buddha, focusing more on teens, uh, kids, youth more specifically. <laughs> yeah, basically I am also a student. I'm in marketing, but this is just my passion, something that I do on the side where I really want to just share it with kids because I was fortunate enough to have this when I was younger. I thank my mom for this actually. She's been an instructor for obviously a lot longer and when I was a kid actually in elementary school she would teach yoga classes and she'd have me on stage with her and I always wanted to teach but she never let me. <laughs> so I was holding poses for her while she taught classes and she said, you gotta work hard and wait, and one day you'll be able to do it too. So when I was 13, I had saved up all my birthday money and decided to enroll in a program. It was a nine month uh, yoga course. And I got my certification, took over my mom's old class and taught that for 10 years actually. I recently passed it on to a new instructor. Yoga's had such a big impact in my life and I've realized that if it wasn't for yoga, I wouldn't have learned what I learned at such a young age and I wouldn't be who I am and I wouldn't be able to conquer uh, the challenges which have presented itself along the way. Um, I'm married as well and definitely a fun, a fun challenge. <laughs> Um, but yeah, my husband actually pushed me to work on my dream of opening a studio um, and I wanted to do something funky, something different and that's where the name The Laughing Buddha came from as well. I wanted to do something that kind of brought my character out. I'm always smiling, I'm always laughing and I am, I guess in some way, The Laughing Buddha. <laughs> I've, I've actually taught quite a few classes. I've taught, in, I've taught in yoga studios, I've taught in rec centers, I've taught in community buildings. I started teaching a couple classes in schools, but they were private schools, and obviously they have a bigger budget to work with as well. But for me, I really wanted to reach out to kids who aren't really exposed to it, and they don't really know that it exists. It's not necessarily a business for me, to be honest. It's just my way to present something that I can offer to everyone. And I feel like there's just, there's so many studios out there, overpriced studios. There's a lot of classes which are being offered in actual community centers and stuff for uh, adults and teens. And so for the youth, technically they wouldn't, as, as far as I know and what I think, I don't feel like they're they're really aware that yoga and meditation isn't something where you're sitting there with your eyes closed and you're just you're stretching you have to be flexible you have to be a certain way it's for adults it's for women it's um it has something to do with being healthy and active and all this stuff and so i felt like the only way where i can really go and expose youth to this is to present it in a business way i don't i don't say hey like you know i I'm an instructor, this is what I expect from you. It's 
this is how I am to my students. I'm a friend. I have a studio, I, I, it's mobile as well. I'm gonna bring the classes to schools. I'm gonna bring the classes to your home, to the park, wherever you want. This is something that I do, which a lot of businesses don't do. That's why I just, I decided to start The Laughing Buddha, is just a way to kind of present what I have to offer and kind of expose it to the school system, I would say, um, more so than parents, just because I've tried to reach out to schools and they didn't want me. <laughs> They, they didn't want me because they just thought, you know, here's this girl who teaches yoga and she just wants to teach yoga. You know, if I actually have a portfolio and I have something I can put together and say, I am the laughing Buddha, this is my business, this is my website, these are my social accounts, this is how long I've been teaching, this is my background, my experience. It, I've had an easier time. I've had an easier time reaching, to, reaching out to, um, to the people who I really want to teach and who I'm targeting all together. I think it's just my style of yoga teaching adults. I got a lot of good feedback for the way that I teach, the style that I teach. I, I'm really, I'm bringing out the youth in, in adults. I let them get crazy, I let them have fun. I'm always joking around. I have a different style and I've had a lot of parents and grandparents and just adults in general who who ask if I teach kids and I thought well why can't I I started looking into it I got my certification to teach kids um, I took a mindfulness course as well specific for youth as well I realized that there's so much more to yoga when you are focusing on kids it's different I started looking into Richmond actually because growing up in Richmond I I don't really hear about any sort of wellness classes or anything even in the school system and I just thought you know what growing up in Richmond I want to give back to the community I want to give back to the city that I grew up in I realized that they have nothing for kids they have nothing for um, people people who are in elementary school, high school, parents are looking for it, but they're having to go to Vancouver. Um, there's so much in Vancouver, so I'm really not doing anything for Vancouver right now. <laughs> that's kind of where it all started. I just, I wanted to, I wanted to give back to my community. And that's when I realized that we don't even have anything here. What I also noticed is, you know, there's a lot of yoga studios and you don't see kids going out there. Kids who are, I don't want to target people that know what yoga is. I don't want to target people who know what meditation is all about. I want to target people who have no idea what yoga and meditation have to offer. It's so much more than what you think and what you see or what a lot of people think and see. It's just a misconception. A lot of people see yoga and they just, they, they don't even consider going to a yoga studio. They, they're scared. They're scared to walk into a studio full of flexible people in tight clothes who are going to do a headstand or, you know, something that, they, that you might not be comfortable doing or know that you're not prepared to do and you maybe need some time. And then you just never get to it. I thought instead of offering something where you have to come to me, I'll bring it to you. And I'm not going to charge you a ridiculous price if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one class. If you are trying to learn something that, that you're curious about, I wanna be the one to offer it to you because I'm not that typical instructor who's gonna teach you exactly what you see on online or in books or what you think yoga is all about because that's my style. It's what you want it to be, really. It's not what I'm teaching you. It's not what I'm saying it is. It's exactly what you want to take from it. And I kind of just go with that. Yeah, that's kind of where it all started. And I'm, my passion for music as well. Oh my gosh, I've gone to yoga classes and I find them so boring. <laughs> that's what I have a hard time with is just walking into a yoga studio and seeing that they're all the same. I know that there are a lot of different classes out there obviously as well because it really comes down to the instructor. But I've been to so many classes where it's just peaceful music and just either it's super active and you got to know what you're doing or it's really slow. I love my rap. I love my hip hop. I love my R&B, my jazz. I want to incorporate that into yoga classes because right now that's what we're all into as millennials. We are all into music. That's where we get our vibes from. So I'm working with that really. My biggest thing is that kids don't really know what's out there unless they're exposed to it or they have 
have a mentor or their parents force them into something, get them to try something new. I'd say a lot of a lot of the instructors are older and a lot of the kids don't feel as comfortable going to those classes because they kind of see it as if, you know, this is another parent or another adult that's telling them this is what you should do, this is how you should think, this is what you need. For me, being 25, being younger and understanding, you know, what it's like to grow up and be out in this crazy world. I want to use that in my classes and expose kids to that. Work with teenagers and tell them like, I know what it's all about. I, you know, I'm on social media. I know Instagram, I know Facebook. I know how scary it can be um, at school and outside of school and how parents might not always get it. That's the thing. I want to, I want to be a friend. I want to be a mentor. I want to be somebody that actually makes the students feel comfortable to learn. I want them to want to come to my classes rather than being forced to come to my classes because there is something that I can relate to. I get it. That's something that I really, I really try to bring out in all of my classes. I talk a lot to my students and I always get that reassurance from these students that they're really learning from me and it's because I'm finding ways to relate to them. That's that's one of the things that's really important to me. So I just wanted to add that. My favorite animal. I love monkeys. <laughs> I think it's because I am a monkey with a Chinese horoscope, is it? <laughs> I'm a monkey born in 92, but I just I love monkeys because they're so playful. Always jumping around crazy and that's me. <laughs> I bring that in my classes too. <laughs> if you really want to see a monkey instructor. <laughs> oh gosh, that's a weird question, but yeah. <laughs>